Hey there AI enthusiasts, your host Chris here with the basic tutorial on how to generate images using stable diffusion in Automatic 11.11. After I baited you here with this awesome thumbnail, I actually have to disappoint you. This is just a basic tutorial and we would go out of scope with this, but I will provide the prompts I've used. You can find them in my video description when you click on the paste bin link. I won't go through the installation since the guide changes almost daily, but you can find here on GitHub Automatic 11.11 Stable Diffusion Web UI. After you start the web UI, your command window should look like this. First up is the Stable Diffusion Checkpoint. Stable Diffusion Checkpoint is essentially the model you are using. But Chris, where do we get such a model? I'm glad you asked. The first one is Hugging Face CO and the other is civitai.com. I personally prefer civitai since I want to see what I get for my disk space because these models are huge. But Chris, there are so many. Yes, I feel you. I have around 40 models in my disk and I even had to uninstall some games. My younger self would kick me if he knew. So don't make my mistakes. Just sort by highest rated and pick a model where you like the general look of the example images. Download it and put it in your stable diffusion folder under models stable diffusion. There is one catch though. Read the description thoroughly because sometimes a model requires a VAE to get proper results or has some other speciality. If my results are bad, I check back at Civit AI to see if I used the model wrong. What is a VAE? Wow, so many new terms. I know that's technically not correct, but for now let's call a VAE an image improver, so like a filter. That's all you need to know for now. So let's get back to your browser. Let's talk about prompts. With prompts, you tell Stable Diffusion what you want. For example, a werewolf. Let's see what Stable Diffusion gives us. Not bad for starters. I use realistic version 20 as a model. If your werewolf looks different, don't worry. This werewolf has kind of a comic style and it looks more of a regular wolf, don't you think? Let's add full body shot to make sure we get the whole picture. Now we can't see the head. There are several ways of fixing this. I add bad crop as a negative prompt and we get the whole werewolf. Another way of fixing this is changing the resolution so the image is a rectangle instead of a square. I remove the negative prompt again and change the resolution to 512 by 768. And now as you can see we get the full werewolf even without the negative prompt. Depending on what kind of image you want, remember that changing the resolution is an option. I would advise you to think beforehand about how the composition should look like. It may be tempting to crank up the resolution to 4K, but don't. On the one hand, the rendering time increases exponentially, and on the other hand, the models are often trained in 512 by 512 or 768 by 768 to keep the model small. As a result, increasing the resolution can lead to artifacts and distortions. I've seen horrible things. The John Carpenter movie The Thing is nothing compared to the horrors I've witnessed. So back to our settings. What is the sampling method? For simplicity, let's say it's the algorithm that looks at a certain data set and creates new images from that data set. EULA E for example, it's not the best, but it's fast. Let me show you a neat little trick here. First you click on the script tab, then on XYZ plot, select sampler, and on the right click the book item. Now when I hit generate, I generate one image per sampler. Let's see what we get. So I fast forwarded this part of the video. As you can see, we get very different results. 
Why is he carrying a basketball? DPM fast. Yeah, now you can see what fast means. I think my favorite is DPM plus plus 2M and DPM plus plus SDE and Euler A. I told you it's not the best, but I think it's solid. I don't know what he carries in the hand actually. When I render, I usually go with DPM plus plus M2 because it's faster than SDE. Now that you've seen the differences between the sampler, let's see what sampling step does. Sampling step is the amount of pictures the algorithm looks at before rendering an image. If you're not satisfied with your results, cranking this up can be the solution, but doesn't have to be. But beware, it increases render time again. Let's see how our wolves look when we crank it up to 90. This looks so much better. Eula A can get decent results if given enough sample step, it seems. Even the moon is round this time. Okay, DPM to A and DPM plus plus S to A look a little derpy. DPM A, Karis and plus plus have the scariest claws. Huh. Yeah, I did not expect to say this, but I have to give it to Eula A, surprisingly. The jeans shorts look a little funny though. Back to the topic. Restore faces can over the image a second time and re-render faces of characters. This is especially useful for non-portrait shots because the algorithm often focus on the whole picture instead of the face, leading to ugly monster-like faces depending on the model you're using. It increases render time, but I often use it because I get a better impression of the final result. Tiling is for when you want to render a texture pattern, for example. You can activate high res fix if your graphics card is fast enough. I often don't use it because I create multiple images with one render and it cranks up the render time quite a lot. If I find an image that I like, I can upscale it later. Resolution should be clear. You get the best results with 512 by 512. 768 by 512 or 512 by 768 as I mentioned before because that's what the models are trained on. Batch size is the number of images that are generated at the same time and batch count is how many batches. So a batch count of 2 and a batch size of 8 would give you 16 images rendered in 2 steps. CFG scale. So Simply spoken, it's how creative the AI can be with your prompts, if you have many. A low value means more freedom and a high value means less. I suggest you keep it between 7 and 15, because too low means the AI will not listen to your prompts at all and value that is too high as it gives you oversaturated images. Now let's turn off the script for this video, at least for now. What does Seed do? Seed is one of the most important settings if you want consistency. Minus one means each image has its own seed. When we want to create similar images, we can take the seed and put it here. Let's see. So I copied the number and it got the same werewolf when rendering. Now. When I change the number and render, you see I get a different image. And when I change the number back, we get the same image again. So these are the basic settings for rendering an automatic 11.11. Next time we will take a deep dive into prompting. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss out on my other videos. The preview, here are some cool werewolves I created. You will find the prompts in the pastebin file I linked below the video. If you want to support me even further, check my Patreon or my Ko-fi. Have a nice day. Bye.